Kate, are you sure you want us to take over these accounts? Of course. Ginny did it all five and a half years while Barrett was in Vietnam and Cambodia. There's no reason why you can't do it now. Unless, of course, Rena objects to your spending so much time on it. I'm a whiz at bookkeeping. I'll help, too. <laughs> there you go. You got a bookkeeping team. Best in the West. <laughs> you can use the study anytime you want to. Okay. Max, I found a guy. You did? Yep. What guy? Uh, Jeb found out from Lurleen that uh, there was this oil rigger got in a fight with Bubba Wadsworth and quit. Jeb. Did you find this out the night that you took Lurleen out? Yeah, yeah, I did, Rena. This guy said he didn't want anything to do with Bubba's sleazy business. Well, what did he mean by that? That's what I'm going to find out. This bar bartender down at Burley's Barbecue said he hangs out this honky-tonk about seven miles down the road, so I'm going to go down and check that out right now. Hey, I'll go with you. Let's go. Max, we've got work to do. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey. Jimmy. Welcome home. Welcome home. Good to be here. Steve. Steve. Hi, oh, buddy, how are you? Oh, Ryan, how are you? Hi, Ryan, not too bad. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Where you been? It's oh. afternoon. I'm starving. I know, but I couldn't get away. Kate came down to the house, and then I had to stay and talk for a little while. Man, I was just about to join Edgar and hunt up a couple of mice for breakfast. Well, I brought you a special treat. Yeah? Yeah. You're always complaining about how I'm bringing you cold chicken. So I decided to change the menu. What's this supposed to be? It's cereal. Great. Instead of cold chicken, I get cold cereal. Would you just try it? You'll like it. What's wrong? Lena, I gotta get out of this place. Good afternoon, Mr. Carey. Hello, Alfredo. Are you here for lunch? No, I was looking for Paige. Oh, well, as you know, she's not working here anymore. Yes, I know, but I checked the suite and she wasn't there. Has she already moved out? Uh, yes, she has. Would you know where I can reach her by any chance? Yes. She left this address and phone number. You can go ahead and put the bags in the bedroom. Yes, sir. It's where the closets are. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What are you thinking? I'm asking myself if I made a mistake by coming here. I, uh, I ordered you a sandwich. Oh, good. What kind? It's a surprise. How are things at the office? Oh, quiet. Mr. Connor went to pick up Jenny and Steve Marshall at the airport, and he's out at the ranch with them now. Oh, well, why don't we go over to my place? I love oh, your bottle. Oh, 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 I'm no. sitting in the refrigerator. We uh -uh. Can, um... I've got to go back to work. Becky is only covering the phone for me for an hour, and I have a lot to do. Uh, I had hoped we could spend the rest of the afternoon together. Maybe some other time. I am still a working girl, you know. <sighs> well, if that's what you're going to be, I'm going to go call my sister Paige and see if I can do a little business with her, if you'll excuse me. Um, on your way to the phone, would you check on my sandwich for me? Oh, yeah. One sandwich, by all means. Starring Beverly McKenzie. Yeah, Ginny, I'm, I'm glad you're home, but I've got, I gotta go. Right? Well, Jeb. What? 
What is so important that he has to leave? He didn't even ask about his father. Uh, well, he's working on a new project. Oh, yeah. By the way, I got to get started on my solar energy project. It has to be done by the beginning of school. Well, then we'll get on it first thing in the morning. How's morning, Glory? Same as when you called from Virginia the other night. <laughs> I think I'll go tell her I'm home. Hey, listen. I got to talk to Guy about something, so I'll walk down to the pasture with you. That is, if Kate thinks the bookkeeping can wait a while. Well, I think it can. I'll <laughs> wait. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Want to come along, Ryan? Uh, sure. <laughs> After you. <laughs> Jenny, you look wonderful. So does Steve. Mm. You know, it was the smartest thing I ever did, taking him to my dad's. My father's army career really helped Steve. He could explain things about Vera that he wouldn't normally have understood. And now he believes that Vera didn't desert him. That's a big step. Yeah. Well, I noticed he included Ryan on his walk down to the pasture. Oh, they, they <laughs> talked nonstop all the way home from the airport. They also did a lot of talking on the phone, didn't they? Yes, yes. Every time Ryan called us in Virginia, he always insisted on talking to Steve. Oh, well, that was very thoughtful of Ryan. It was important to Ryan. He wants Steve to like him. Kate, are you all right? I'm fine. Rena and Max took good care of me. Well, we couldn't play, take your place, Ginny. She missed you very much. <laughs> yes, I did. Welcome home. <laughs> okay, Justin. Okay. Your brother? Mm -hmm. What did he want? wants to talk business. What kind of business? He wants me to sell him my share of the ranch. Do you want to do that? I don't know. I don't know what I want right now. Look, Paige, if it's a question of money, you know, you don't have to worry. Peter, I, I, I want you to know I'm very grateful for you offering me a place to stay since I was thrown out of the suite, but... I want you to understand this is only a temporary arrangement. It doesn't have to be. Yes, it does. As soon as I can, I'm going to go out and find a place of my own. I don't intend on putting you out any longer than I have to. Not putting me out. This was my suggestion. Look, Paige, you've been through a very rough crisis. You shouldn't be worrying about the future right now. I have to think about the future. All right, take it one step at a time. Don't try to push yourself. I'm hardly able to move today, let alone push myself. <laughs> then take it slowly. I think you should start by trying to forget your husband. Yes. And to forget whatever it is that was upsetting you that pushed you to the edge. Peter, please don't tell anybody what I did last night. I won't. As long as you promise me that you won't try such a stupid thing ever again. I, I'm not suicidal. I mean, it's not something that I think about all the time. It's, it's just that last night alone in the suite, doors seemed to close on me, that's all. I think, in fact, quite the opposite is true. I think all the doors are just beginning to open for you. Oh. That must be room service with the coffee I ordered. Are you sure you don't want anything to eat? No, I, I'll get a bite with Justin later. Hello, Peter. I'm looking for Paige. Thank you. May I have some ice tea, please? Did you get in touch with Paige? Yeah. We're going to have a little drink at uh, Henri's uh, later. What I've heard about Paige, I think she needs more than a drink. Yeah, well, she's a bit down on her luck these days. And I guess you'll be making hay while the sun shines, as they say. Actually, I'm not trying to take advantage of her. I'm trying to help her. I hope that's true. Since when have you become Paige's new best friend? Paige's husband has told her he wants to divorce her. She's been kicked out of her job. She's been kicked out of Mr. Wheeler's suite by her mother-in-law. That's a whole lot for a girl to take all at one time. Mm-hmm. 
That's why I'd like to help her. For a little help in return. Well, what's wrong with both of us coming out ahead on this? Well, for some reason, Justin, I just feel like you'll come out a little more ahead than Paige will. No, I, I, I think we'll both come out uh, even on this deal. Okay. You want to meet me here for dinner later? Well, I was planning on going home and washing my hair and going to bed early. Well, let's have dinner first, then we can both go home and go to bed early. I promise not to keep you out past ten. <laughs> I can't say no to you. <laughs> I hope you never do, my darling. Uh, yes. Uh, could you get me uh, some ginger ale with a lot of ice, please? Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Rena. Tell me what's wrong with Kate. What is she so upset about? Kate doesn't want you to know about it, Jim. Well, tell me anyhow. And I'll find out about it sooner or later. I guess you will. Justin is trying to buy control of the ranch. Why? For the obvious reason. He thinks there's a lot of oil here. Rena, he can't do that. He thinks he can, and that's just what he's doing. Dawn sold her share of the ranch to him. Dawn loves this place. But going to Paris was more important to her. <sighs> Does she know why Justin bought her out? I wouldn't know that, but I do know that Justin is planning to buy Paige out, too. Well, that still won't give him control of the ranch. Unless Barry or Courtney agree to sell. That won't happen. Barrett and Courtney are both just as crazy about this ranch as Kate is. Kate should know that. She does, Jenny. But things are happening too fast. She's scared. Through wars, depressions, and drought, Kate always kept this branch going, no matter what. But when your own grandson is trying to buy you out, buy the land that you loved and protected all of your life, Ginny, can you imagine what she's going through? If Barry was here, ah, oh, in his condition, he wouldn't be of any use. Well, regardless of his condition, Rena, he would never sell out to Justin. I... I know Justin. And he won't stop until he can find a way to drill on this land. Striking that oil well in the harbor place really made him crazy, didn't it? What do you think? Well, Ryan wasn't much happier about the strike. Not, not much happier than Max was. You know that. Ryan has always been opposed to Justin's project. But <laughs> now that the company stands to make millions... Well, Ryan wants to talk to Dennis and Iris about the direction that the company should head in the next couple of years. But I know that Ryan is opposed to exploring for oil production. What are Iris's ideas about the company's policy? I don't think Ryan's discussed it with her yet. And he won't until he feels that she's had time enough alone to cope with her grief. But when Iris is uh, feeling stronger in a couple of weeks, then I'm sure Ryan will settle this once and for all. It's fine. Just so long as Max and Jeb don't decide to settle it first. How you doing? Howdy. I'm having a beer. You're uh, starting kind of early this morning, aren't you? Oh, it's never too early. <laughs> hey, Sonny Morris around? Sonny Morris. Yeah, his truck's out front. So? Uh, I owe him some money, you know. I got paid and I want to square up. You win that poker game the other night. <laughs> I tell you something, he ain't never going to remember that. Uh, he's in the back making a phone call to his wife. Seems they're having a little bit of trouble. That'd be a buck. Beer. Hey, Sonny. 
How you doing, man? Who are you? I was in the poker game with you the other night. Woohoo! <laughs> Guess I really tied one on, didn't I? Yeah, man, you sure did. <laughs> I don't remember much about that night, except my wife was madder than hell when I got home. <laughs> you still working for Bubba Wadsworth over there at the Harper place? Hey, don't ever mention that name in front of me, huh? Why not? No one to talk about it. Were you still working for him? No. Never again. Well, I guess I can't really blame you, you know, well, what Bubba was saying about your wife and everything about her running around behind the trap. Why, Elliot? Come in, please. How did you know I was here? Well, it wasn't difficult since you left Peter's address and phone number with Alfredo. Oh. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I came over to see if there was anything I could do for you. Oh, why, thank you, but uh, there's really nothing. I thought you might be upset a little over having to move out of Alex's suite. You mean Irish's suite? Yeah. I was a little upset at first, but uh, I'm just fine now, thank you. You sure? Well, yeah, why? Don't I look fine? Yes. Paige, I think that Dennis... I'd rather not talk about Dennis if you don't mind, Elliot. Of course. Are you planning to stay here long? Uh, I, I really hadn't thought about it. I, gu I guess until I find a place of my own. Well, there's several vacant apartments in my building. If you want... Thank you, Elliot. I think I'd rather do the looking on my own. I see. Well, I really should go now and get dressed to go out. Well, I apologize for stopping by unannounced. I thought you might need a friend. Well, I have a friend. <laughs> I appreciate your concern. Thank you. You can reach me at my apartment. Also, I may be speaking to Vicky about returning to KVIK, so you might try me there. Well, if I do need to get in touch with you, I'll keep that in mind. Yes, do. Keep that in mind. Well, again, I'm sorry to have barged in on you. Paige. Hey. Peter. Elliot is one of the kindest, most gentlest men I've ever met in my life. And I don't deserve to be his friend. Hi. What are you doing out here all alone, huh? Oh, Rena just went inside to call the contractor. You know, they're going to start building their house in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, Max just told me all about his plans while we were walking out of the pasture. He's real excited. Mm, so is Verena. And from what Max said, it's going to be a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Where's Steve? We took uh, Morning Glory over to Buddy's. <laughs> he treats that heifer like it was a puppy. <laughs> sure glad you're home. Mm. Oh, so am I. Mm, I missed you so much. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I should have flown back here when Alex died. I hated that you were all alone. Well, uh, keeping busy uh, helped a little. Really do miss him, don't you? Yeah, Alex, uh, he was like a father to me. and uh, He sent money to my mother to support me, and he paid for my education. The most important thing is uh, I was always able to talk to him, and confide in him. I uh, guess it sounds selfish, but uh, I miss that most of all. Do you know your Uncle Grant very well? Mm -mm, never had much contact with him. I saw him a couple of times in law school. Uh, you see, his wife, Judith, didn't like me any more than she did Alex, so uh, made things a little difficult. Maybe. Now that Grant is, is divorced and he's back here in Houston, plans to stay here for a while, maybe you two can grow closer to each other. Yeah, I guess. Honey, he is your family. You should try to build a relationship with him. Well, the only relationship I'm interested in now is ours. Yours and mine. Mm -hmm. It's 
Stryker told me that, that Barrett wasn't going to contest the divorce. I know. It surprised me. I thought we were going to have a lot of trouble from him. Mm, well, we're not. And all we have to do now is wait until the divorce is final. You know what I'm going to do while we're waiting? What's that? I'm going to court you. Court me? Uh-huh. <laughs> we're going to have an old-fashioned court you. So I'm going to call on you, and I'm going to bring you flowers and candy, and I'm going to take you to the moving picture show, and I'm going to sit in the parlor with you and Kate, and we're going to talk about the weather. Would you like that? I'd love that. You watch your mouth, boy. Hey, man, would you take it easy, will you? I'm not the one that's talking about your wife. It's Bubba. Now, I just thought you ought to know that, that's all. And from what I heard... Your wife is real nice. She's a good Christian woman. Well, what, what do you think Bubba has against you, then? I'll take care of Bubba one of these days. Somebody else don't do it first. Hey, uh, let me talk to you for a second, okay? Let, let me buy you a beer. You want a beer? You want a beer? Yeah. Let me have a beer. Come on, sit down over here. Listen. I work over at the Marshall place. I work with Max Decker. So what? Uh, so we think Bubba's up to something. Something you want to tell us? Hey. Uh, what if I living on rigs? Bubba's got friends that, that owe him. And he'd make sure I didn't work again. Nobody's going to know where the information comes from. find out what Mike Marshall thought of Bubba. He worked with him in 68. Sorry about that shirt. No problem. Ah, hello, Paige. Yes. Now, we're going to get you to drink. Oh, uh... Uh, hot tea? I'll have scotch on the rocks, please. Oh, wait. Uh, would you like something to eat? No, thank you. Are you ill? I felt better. You look very tired, Paige. Do I? Why don't you take a vacation, get some sun, enjoy yourself? Well, I certainly have some free time for that now, don't I? I was very sorry to hear about what happened. Oh, yeah, well, easy come, easy go. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have no trouble getting another job. I don't think anybody in Houston is going to hire me, Justin. Iris will see to that. Oh, now, Iris doesn't know everybody in Houston. Doesn't matter. She's a very vindictive lady. She'll do anything to make me miserable. I was surprised to hear that you were staying at the Packard Hotel. Why, it's just as good as any, isn't it? Paige, what's happened between you and Dennis? I'd really rather not talk about it if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll, ju we'll just stick to business uh, so you can get home to the hotel and, and go to sleep. Thank you. I want to buy your shares of the ranch, Paige. Justin, do you really think that you're going to get control of that ranch and turn it into an oil field? It's possible. With a little help from my brothers and sisters. You want some fresh fruit? No. Well, I brought you those bananas to put on your cereal. Fresh fruit is good for you, you know. Nice hot meal be good for me, too. I did bring you a hamburger last night. Great. A hamburger. I've been, over, I've been here over a week and I get a hamburger one night. Every other night it's cold chicken or cold meatloaf or cold whatever's left after dinner. Look, Joe, I know that this is difficult for you, but it's too dangerous for me to take chances cooking. I mean, Jeb and Ricky would get suspicious. And the only reason I was able to get you a hamburger last night in the first place was because Jeb went out. I'm not blaming you, Elena. I know it's difficult for you to get food, but that's all the more reason why I gotta get out of here. I gotta find another place to hide out. 
where will you go? I don't know. And you don't even have any money. Well, that's something else. I mean, I gotta find out where those guys come from so I can get that money back. Joe, forget about that money. It's gone. It's not gone. Now, look, I've put in a lot of time and effort to get that money. I cannot give up now. Yeah? And the last time you tried to get it and you got into a fight over it, you got shot. I know, but I would have been okay. How can you say that? The doctor told you himself that that wound was already infected. And I think it's pretty lucky for you that you got those antibiotics when you did. How is the wound? It's fine. I want to check it. I said it's fine. You know, Joe, this hayloft is not exactly the cleanest place in the world. I think it's cleaner than the place I was staying in. Well, I don't want us to take any chances. Now, if that thing is infected again, I'm the one that's going to have to go to Dr. McAllister, so I want to see for myself. Well, it's my wound, and I say it's okay. Joe, please. I'm sorry, I'll leave you two alone. No, no, Rena, now you sit right down here and you're going to tell us all about the house. <laughs> you know, we're in the market for an architect and a contractor. Well, why don't you use ours? It's been very helpful. I'll give you his name and phone number. Oh, good, then everything was going as planned, huh? Yes, ma'am. Now all I have to figure out is the date of the barn dance, and then the following day we'll start ground, breaking ground on our house. But, of course, now, if we break ground on the day that we have the barn dance, you know, to tell you the truth, I have to ask Max. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what dance? Well, Max has decided to celebrate the house construction with a barn dance. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful idea. Does that mean you're going to help? Oh, you betcha. I'll be glad to. We're going to have a terrific time because <laughs> Max has invited half of Texas, although I think you'll settle for half of the county. Instead. Well, whatever I can do, you be sure to ask me and I'll help you out, okay? Mm-hmm. If you excuse me, I think I'll just stroll on down to bar number three. I want to check things out. Well, we were going to go check out the property we're buying from Kate. You want to come with us? Um, you two go ahead, and if I run into Max, I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you. Okay. Bye-bye. Ma'am? Sir? Want to go to the barn dance with me? <laughs> I'd love to. Only thing is, uh, you have to dance every dance with me. Well, I thought maybe I could at least dance one dance with Max. Okay. I'll dance one dance with Rena, but the rest is ours. All right? Okay, then I'll be yours for the rest of the evening. Will you be mine for the rest of our lives? Yes. And you'll be mine. I love you, Jenny. I love you. You know, Justin, even when we were kids, you wanted all the marbles for yourself. Well, that was the object of the game, Paige. But we're not kids anymore, Joss. No. No, this is a grown-up world, Paige. You know, you're never going to see much money from the, from the ranch. Not as long as Grandma runs it. You haven't seen any up to now, have you? Oh, there'll be some good years and bad years. I'm talking about millions of dollars, Paige, when I strike oil on the Marshall property. You mean millions for you, Justin. If I sell you my share of land, you'll be making the millions I won't. You sell me the land, Paige. I'll triple what World Oil paid old man Harper. When the profits start to roll in, you'll have a percentage of those profits. You can't lose. You make money now, and you have a future. Sounds too good to be true, brother dear. I've drawn up a little agreement here, Paige, for you to look at. It's all right there in black and white. I also have a check here made out to you for one-third of the land price, the balance of which will be paid in installments. Oh, by the way, those uh, figures are on future profits right there in front of you. I really can't concentrate on uh, figures too well today. Paige, you never did like the ranch. Why don't you make it work for you? 
You know, I've often thought, what would have happened if Dad had brought out Grandma? We'd all be millionaires. Dad would probably be still alive. You'd be a movie star. I know you would. Give me your pen. Right there. Thanks, sis. Don't you feel better now? For some reason, I feel even emptier than I did before. Say, don't you think Ginny looks terrific? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to have her home. And just in time for your barn dance, too. Rena and I, we want to clean out barn number three. Hire some high school students to do it. Well, give Judd Wilson's boy a call. I ran into him in the grocery store the other day. He wanted to know if we had any work out here. I will. Right. What do you think about the dance? Oh, can't wait. Last time I went to a barn dance was... Well, I just can't remember how long ago. You know, we used to have a lot of dances when I was a girl. <laughs> Well, I hope you save me a dance. I sure will. Okay. Good deal. Well, what happened to you? Well, oh. Did you have some problems? No, no big deal. Kate, what do you know about Mike's oil dealings? Not much, since I always disapproved of them. Why'd you ask? I found Sonny Morris. Is that how you got your shirt torn? Ah, uh, it was just an accident. Look, he's the guy that walked off above his job. He wouldn't tell me what the fight was about, but he said find out what everybody thought. But Mike Marshall had worked with him, find out what he thought about him. They worked together back in 68. Say, listen, you told me something about that. I mean, you, you told me that uh, Mike had pulled out of that project. Yes, but I, I don't know why. And I don't know anyone else who was connected with it. Well, maybe there's some in the files. Well, you're welcome to look. There's some are in the cellar, some in the attic, and some in the study. I'm going to check the cellar. And I'll go look at the attic. Oh, now you be careful up there. It's a mess. I will. Well, hello. Yeah, it looks like Paige sold you the land. Yes, indeed. Waiter, <laughs> get us a big bucket of champagne, would you please? Well, well, well. Oh, but your grandmother isn't going to be smiling when she hears about this. Now, the trouble with Grandma is she's still living in the past. She, um, she's still fighting the Alamo, if you know what I mean. She should step aside and let the new generation of marshals take over. Well, you can't take over right yet. We've still got to get Courtney or Barrett one to sell you their land before you can get control. I get control. You can bet on that. Then you have to hope that there's oil on the property. What if the land was dry? There's oil. I'm sure of it. You can never be sure about oil until you drill for it. If you remember, you're the one that said that. I'm sure. Just hope you're not in for any surprises. I don't like surprises. That's why I like to plan everything. I like to know what's happening and when it's happening. If you don't have a plan, then you lose control, Ashley. Well, you're talking about business. No. I guess I'm also talking about my personal life. <laughs> but you're very unpredictable. I let other people think that. Keeps them off guard. You don't think a nice little surprise every once in a while would just help keep life interesting? Life is interesting enough. Ah, here we are. <laughs> Excellent. Chill a couple more for us, will you? Oh, Paige, glad you're back. What's your meeting with your brother? enough. You take you to some fancy restaurant? No, we uh, went to a little French place, I guess. Well, I thought your brother was supposed to be some fancy big shot with world oil now. I should think he'd want to be seen in all the right places. Maybe he does, but maybe he doesn't want to be seen with the wrong people. <laughs> 
I'm sure that's not the reason. It doesn't matter. I wasn't hungry anyway. Did he make you a good offer? Good enough, I guess. Paige, this is signed. Mm. You sold your share of the ranch? Do you think that's wise, Paige? To make this kind of a decision in your condition? I think you should have thought it over. I don't want to think about it. Before I left to see Justin, you told me that there were all kinds of doors opening for me, Peter. I think I have to close all the old ones first. I have an idea that your grandmother's not going to be very happy about your having sold out to your brother. I don't care what Grandma thinks. I just want to make a clean break with the past, all right? Well, well I think that's a step in the right direction. How do you feel? Oh. Like I sold my soul to the devil. Does that hurt when I touch it? No. Well, how about that? Does that hurt? No, but if you keep poking at it, it might. Well, it looks all right to me. It, it's not infected, you know. Did you take all those antibiotics the doctor gave you? Yes, Mother. You know, you don't like it when you have people worrying over you, do you? I don't need people worrying over me. I can take care of myself. Oh. I don't think that I buy that tough guy stuff, you know? I think that somewhere in there is a real nice man hiding. And you fight him every time he tries to come out. Oh, stop with a mush, will you? You see? You're even afraid of emotion. You're afraid to really show people that you care about them. You're a regular little Sunday school teacher, aren't you? And you're avoiding the subject. I can't figure you out. And after all the things I've done to you, kidnapped you twice, shot your brother, why are you being so nice to me? And you should have turned me in the moment I got shot. Instead, you bring me out to your house. Sometimes I think you're the crazy one. You saved my life. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> Whatever made you decide to get this tattoo on your hand, Joe? Well, I just think it'd be easier if we found Sonny Morris again and got the rest of the information from him. No, he won't give it to you. He's afraid of Bubba Wadsworth. I was lucky to get what I did out of him. How did you get that information from him? I was lucky. I was real lucky there, Kate. Maybe we're going to call Stryker, see if he's in his office. No, no, no. Hallie will call the minute Stryker gets back from court. Well, I think that if Stryker knew what Sonny Morris knows about Bubba Wadsworth, he'd have told us already. Well, you're right, Max. Stryker is Mike's, was Mike's lawyer, and he was not able to know all the details of Mike's business. We ought to get Ginny and Rena in on this thing. I mean, it's going to take a few weeks here. Here it is. What? It's a copy of a letter from Mike Marshall to someone named David Langston. That name doesn't mean anything to me. What's the date? October 5th, 1968. Mike pulled out of the project because he thought that Bubba Wadsworth was slant drilling. There's no way to prove it. I don't understand. Oh, I knew there was no oil on the Harper Ranch. What Justin and Bubba are doing is taking the oil from our property. That's why that oil rig is right up on our border. There never was any oil on the Harper place. It's coming from our land. Joe? 
Hmm? I was asking you whatever possessed you to get this awful tattoo on your arm. What's wrong? I was just thinking what it would have been like if we'd met in San Diego in school. <laughs> I bet that we would have been good friends. Oh, you think so? Sure. I don't think so. I don't think you would have given me a second look. I think I would have. Nah. You would have treated me the same way all the other girls from your background treated me. And what kind of background is that? Girls whose families got money. <laughs> My family does not have money. No? I'd say any family's got a barn and a ranch like this must have some money. <laughs> This barn and this ranch belong to the marshals. And my father was just a foreman on the marshal ranch. Yeah, well, I'd say your family still had more money than mine did. You know, I do wish I had known you back in high school. Before you left home. Before you got messed up with all those awful people. Who's there? Shh. Who's up there? Whoever you are, I've got a gun and you better come down. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. I should have known that Justin and Bubba were doing something like slant drilling. I should have known that the minute they struck oil. Max, there's no proof that they're up to something. We have this letter that Mike wrote that says Bubba Wadsworth was slant drilling back in 1968. He must be an expert at it by now. Max, the letter states that Mike suspected they were slant drilling. Now, Mike had no proof. That's why he pulled out of the project. Well, I'm not going to back away so easily. If Justin thinks that he's going to steal oil from our property and get away with it, he's got another thought coming. <laughs> Justin, now this is the last one of the night. Well, I'm, I'm high enough on happiness. <laughs> well, I bet you are. <laughs> You've had quite a good week. Oh, you know, well, the well came in. I'm, uh, I'm on my way to buying the ranch. Not bad, is it? Hmm? Not bad. You imagine, you imagine the amount of oil on that ranch property. Now the survey indicated that, but you can't be sure. Oh, yes, there is oil. I talked to Walton at the bank. He expressed a sudden joy at giving me a sizable loan. <laughs> well, I'm glad that he decided to do that because I don't think that Ryan Connor's going to be allotting any more world oil money. Well, I don't need the money now. I got enough to buy the ranch. Harper Well is, is running to full capacity. I'm going to send Bubba over to Louisiana. He can start our next oil drilling project right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you the wheeler dealer? You're not so bad at wheeling and dealing, Ashley. It's not a compliment. You bet it is, my love. You know, you're a very clever lady. I've always been impressed by that. Here is to a very bright future. Together. <laughs> Justin seems to be celebrating something. I hope it's not another strike on the Harper property. And not had time to drill another oil, so that can't be it. Mm -hmm. It could be something of a more personal nature. You think he could be in love? Well, they certainly seem alive, each other. 
Well, maybe you get married, settle down, and leave uh, Rena alone. <laughs> Justin may marry a girl, but I doubt very much if he'll settle down. And I also doubt if he'll ever leave Rena alone. Oh, Ricky, you didn't have to get a present for Village Well, Ocean, I know yeah? I didn't have to, but I Aww. wanted to. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's cute. <laughs> did you pick this out all by yourself? Yes, I did, with a little help from the sales lady. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a little big, I know. Well, he'll grow Oh, excuse me, just a minute. There's a customer. Hi. Oh, wait a minute, Maggie. I know this guy. He's from the New York PD. Mr. Decker, how are you? I'm fine. Um, Detective Michaels. Hey, good memory. Good memory. Yeah, well, it'll be a long time before I forget that trip to New York. <laughs> Say, what are you doing in Houston? Well, I'm... Looking around, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have to ask you a few questions about Joe Foster. I wish I had known you in high school. Before you left home. And before you got messed up with all those awful people. What was that? I don't know. Down there. Who's there? Shh. Who's up there? Whoever you are, I've got a gun and you better come down. Rena? Is that you? Elena? What are you doing with that gun? <sighs> what am I doing with this gun? You practically scared me half to death. Well, I'm sorry. Why didn't you answer when I called? I guess I didn't hear you at first. Well, what were you doing up in a hayloft this time of night anyway? Starring Beverly McKenzie. I was up in the hayloft looking for Edgar. I came here to bring him some milk. Oh, so that's what it was. What what was? The milk that was dripping down from the hayloft. Well, I, I got so startled when I finally heard you that I knocked over the milk bowl. Huh. May I ask you a question, Elena? Do you always come down here to feed Edgar this time of night? No, not always. But Edgar's been looking a little scrawny lately, you know. I guess there's a shortage of mice this summer. Mm. <laughs> Are you scared being up in that hayloft? No, I used to go up in that hayloft all the time when I was a kid. Especially at night. Ricky and I used to play hide-and-seek up there. Hmm. I think I'd be scared. All those rats and mice and hoot owls. And who know who knows what else? Well, I feel safe with Edgar up there. Hmm. Rena, what are you doing down at the barn so late? Oh, honey, you'd never guess. I thought I'd come down here to get some ideas for our barn dance. Barn dance? Mm-hmm. We're going to start building on our house, so Max and I are going to celebrate by having a barn dance right here. Isn't that a great idea? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Listen, will you promise me that you'll tell me the minute you start to fix up the barn so I can help you? Mm hmm I will. Okay. Must be later than I thought. It's getting dark already. Guess I'll have to come back tomorrow morning. What time? What time? What time do you think you'll be coming back? <laughs> well, I don't know. Why do you ask? Well, I can meet you here. Oh, honey, that's sweet of you. No, you don't have to bother. I'm just going to be taking some measurements. Come on, I'm going to go back up to Kate's. 
I'd walk you halfway home, okay? No, um, I think that I should go upstairs and get that bowl that I left. I can wait. Well, actually, I guess uh, Edgar might want some of the milk that was left in the bowl. He, he might want it later. I just wish they'd find that Joe Foster. Every time I think about him and what happened, I get the shivers. Well, thank the Lord he didn't hurt you and you got this happy, healthy baby here. Maggie, I'm sorry for being late on my first day at work. Honey, that's all right. I had to go out and buy a pair of new shoes. The only ones I have were these high-heeled things. And if I'm going to be on my feet all evening, I've got to have something that's comfortable. Don't worry, look, you're not more than ten minutes late and we're not busy anyway. Angela, this is Nita. She used to have your job till something more important came along. Mm -hmm. Nita, this is Angela Perez. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. And, um... This is the something more important. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Thanks. But he's a lot of work, too, aren't you? Oh, but when I see him just laying here so happy, smiling away, not a care in the world. Isn't he, darling? Mm. What's his name? Billy Joe Jr. You know, I don't know how he can be so good in here and so happy with all the glasses being broken and the plates being dropped and that jukebox blaring all the time. It's one of the miracles of modern science. I think he's just used to it. After all, he practically spent the first nine months of his life right here. Uh, excuse me a second. Sure. Let me see those shoes. Oh, they're not very attractive. As long as they give you support, that's all that matters. Mm. Hello? Oh, hi, honey. How's everything in Amarillo? Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying that new job. Yeah, honey, me too. I, I miss you. Well, yeah, I've been thinking about it. Well, honey, I know it's tough. I feel the same way. And, and that's why I've decided... Just as soon as I can find somebody to buy the restaurant, I'm going to come and join you, Dwayne. Max, what's wrong? Justin is stealing oil from our property, and I'm going to put a stop to it. What are you talking about? He's stealing oil. Max suspects Justin and Bubba of slant drilling. Well, that's illegal. You know that. Well, that wouldn't stop Justin, and it sure as hell wouldn't stop Bubba. What makes you think that they're slant drilling? Because of the letter that Mike Marshall wrote about Bubba back in 68. What, this letter? Mm-hmm. He thinks that Bubba is capable of it, something like that. Well, I know Justin is capable of it, and I'm going to put a stop to it right now. Max! Kate! Kate, can I borrow your car? Oh, uh, we'll have the house dressing, please. Do you really think that we have a bright future together? Oh, you bet I do. You working for Ryan Connor? Me running the oil production division, we're going to take this town by storm. With, uh, we can accomplish so much, so many of our goals working together. But what are our goals? I mean, besides you becoming a millionaire and gaining control of the ranch. Gaining control of world oil. <laughs> world oil? Why do you seem so surprised? <laughs> Justin, you haven't even worked there that long. So what? The Harper Place was my first venture in oil exploration. You see what happened there? Can you imagine what I can do with that company? Now, Justin, I know that you believe in positive thinking and all that, but uh, there are other people involved. Oh, I know that. Ryan Connor, for instance, will have a lot to say about it. <laughs> Listen, Ryan Connor is in a very vulnerable position right now. The board of directors are very nervous about where the uh, company is headed. Iris isn't too pleased with him at the moment, either. And along <laughs> comes Justin Marshall with all his new oil deposits. Well, just one at the moment. But that's money in the bank. And that money opens the doors. What are behind the doors? Power, Ashley. Your daddy had power, Justin. Well, not really. He was dependent on a lot of friends. 
When I failed him, he failed. I won't allow that to happen to me. You can't do it alone. I know that. I know that, Ashley. I'll, uh, I will accept help from friend and enemies alike. But when I make it to the top, I'll be my own man. The Marshal name will mean as much as it did before. As I said, I'm continuing my investigation of Joe Foster. Why are you investigating this? I would think that it'd all be up to Houston by now. Ordinarily it would, but the crime was committed in my jurisdiction, so I have to come down to wrap it up. Is Foster really that important? Well, he's a good bait. We figure if we can nail him, we can probably pull the plug on the whole operation. So you think that uh, Foster's working for somebody a little higher up? We think so. Well, you know, he got away with all that money. Lena said it was close to a million dollars. I would think the guy would be long gone by now. Maybe. Then again, maybe not. Joe? It's me, Elena. Are you alone? Of course I'm alone. Don't say, of course I'm alone. You left with your friend. For all I know, you might have come back with your friend. You know, I wanted to make sure that Rena was gone. That's why I had to wait for such a long time. What is wrong with you? Oh, nothing's wrong. Everything's great. I'm hiding away in some hayloft that belongs to some friends of a girl I don't even know. I don't have any money. I got a bullet wound in my side. The cops are after me. Other than that, everything's great. And to top it off, I hear you, your friend saying that she's going to have a barn dance right underneath me in a week or so. All right, so I will find another place for you to hide out the night that we have that dance. But why don't I just stay here? That way you can sneak up from time to time. We'll have our own little dance right up over there. I was just trying to help you, Joe. I'm sorry. I know it. I, I appreciate it. She said I'm getting crazy being cooped up like this. I might as well be in prison. Don't say that. Well, it's true. I never should have come here. I told you that. I mean, we're just going to get in trouble in the end. No, no. We won't. Elena, look. I got to get out of here. I'm getting sick and tired of cold cereal and cold chicken and sleeping up there in a hay with some cat beside me. Okay. Okay, I, I can move you if you want to the line shack down on the South Range. Nobody ever goes there. That's what you said about the barn. No, but listen, this time this place is really secluded, and, and we can make it into a, a little house, you know? I, I could even bring you a cot. Oh, Lena. Would you just listen to me now? The line shack isn't as big as the barn, but at least you wouldn't have to worry about people coming in and out all the time. And if you wanted a hot meal, I, I could fix you one. Why are you doing this? I told you I was no good. Don't you see? There's no point. It's too late. Stop saying that, Joe. Elena, I'm telling Stop you. Stop it. There's another reason I gotta leave. What? You, Elena. Where's Dean? Oh, he wanted to spend the night at Buddy's, so I told him he could go. I hope that was all right. Oh, sure, it's fine. Oh. Knowing that he wants to go over and see Buddy, that means that he'll be able to talk about the divorce. That's a very important step for Stephen. Oh, I think so, too. You know... Steve was telling me about a running camp that he thought he'd like to go to later in the summer. Do you know about that? Well, he mentioned it to me a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't think he was interested anymore. Well, looks like he's interested again. I'm glad. Oh, I sure hope Steve gets here for Rena's barn dance. Huh? Oh, Rena is so excited about that barn dance. Max, too. Well, it looks like it'll be the party of the year. Is everything all right, Kate? Yes. Kate. 
Are you thinking about the uh, dance that your husband and yourself gave when you had raised your first bar? Mm. I've given that a lot of thought since Rena's first announced her plans. That certainly was a night to remember. You know, Jenny and I aren't going to have a dance when we start construction in our house. If we can borrow your barn. <laughs> and then when Steve grows up and he decides to build oh, out well, That's here. always been a dream of mine. Kate, everything's going to be fine with this ranch. You should know that. Rena told you. Yes. Oh. I might have known as much. Rena tells you everything. Well, you know, I was bound to find out sooner or later. Yes, I suppose so. What's going on? Justin is trying to buy control of the ranch from his brothers and sisters. He's already bought Don's share, and now he's trying to work on Paige. You know that Barry and Courtney will never sell out to Justin. Know that. Oh, I'm not so sure of things anymore. It all changes so fast. Kate, Barrett, Barrett's love for this land will never change. It goes too deep, and so does Courtney's. She loves this place. I'm sure of that. Well, I've had my dreams, and I've seen some of them come true. <sighs> Maybe I'll have to settle for memories now. Nita, what's wrong? Nothing. Doesn't look like nothing to me. Oh, Maggie. It was that little phone call I had earlier, wasn't it? I know it's not in my business listening honey, in on honey, it, but it's, you can't... It's going to be all right. May, I don't want you to leave. I don't want you to honey. leave. Listen, I... I don't want to leave either, but... Sometimes... Wait, wait a minute. What are you all talking about? Well, I wasn't going to say anything... Because I hadn't made up my mind yet, but, uh... Well, Dwayne got this real good job with the trucking firm down in Amarillo, and, uh... Well, he wants me to come and join him there. Oh. What about your restaurant? Well, I, uh... I guess I'll have to find a buyer or, uh, Find somebody to run it for me. Well, no wonder Nita was so upset. It's really a blow, Maggie. Well, it wasn't an easy decision for me either, Ricky, and... Well, now I've made it, and I'm, I'm going to stick by it. I know you think I'm selfish, not wanting you to leave. But, Maggie, you're the only family I got left. I'm going to miss you. <gasps> All right, if you're ready, I'll get the check. <clears throat> Sorry, sir, but coat and tire require... I'm not trying it. I thought I'd find you here spending my money. You're a crook, Justin Marshall. Max! I know about the plan to slant through, and you're not going to get away with it. I am trying to have a quiet dinner with my lady friend. Why don't you go back to the farm where you belong? You outsmarted yourself this time, Justin. Look, Decker, I don't know what you're talking about. I suggest you get out of here and go sober up. I am not drunk. I am cold sober. And I'm going to have you arrested, and you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail, and Bubba Wadsworth, too. Oh, calm down, Max. Stryker, get the hot-headed cowboy out of here, please. What's the matter, Justin? Don't you want these nice people here to hear the truth? Justin and Bubba are slant drilling. They're stealing oil from my property. Max! That's a serious accusation. It's not true. I'm warning you, Justin, and I warned you before. Get him out of here, Stryker, before I knock him through the window. Come on now, let's, uh, let's settle this later. I'm going to settle it now. Oh, no. Uh, you're going with me, honey. i got to get Max in no, here first. No, Max. We'll your father will take care of him. Come on, you're coming with me. Come, Come on. on. Let's get out of here. Not only have you made an idiot out of yourself, but you've slandered me in public. I suggest you get some legal advice from your father-in-law because I'm going to slap a lawsuit on you first thing in the morning. Talk to you later, Stryker. Would you like some more champagne? It's this oil business. I just can't stand what it does to people. It drives them kind of crazy. I know. I've seen it with some of the members of the board of directors of World Oil. 
For years, they were perfectly willing to transport oil, but now they want to jump into oil production full scale. Yeah. Well, it's Justin that worries me. You know, he talked Don into selling her shares to him, even when she didn't know why he wanted them. I think that Paige will know. Well, why don't you buy Paige out so that you won't have to worry about this, huh? Rena suggested that. Maybe it's not such a bad idea. But Paige said she had no reason to sell. Talk to her, make her an offer. Tell her that she'll equal or beat Justin's price. Well, I'll, I'll give it some thought. Kate, if you ever need any help raising money, don't hesitate. Huh? Oh, I appreciate that, Ryan. I'll let you know. Well, maybe after supper we should go to the parlor. The talk. parlor? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, are you planning to court Ginny in the old-fashioned way? Well, Kate, if you approve... I do. Uh, just so long as we don't talk about the weather or the oil business. Sure you're all right now, Ashley? <clears throat> I guess so. Well, would you like an after-dinner drink? What I'd like is an explanation. <laughs> well, Ashley, I can't explain Max Decker to you. He came in oh, here and pulled Oh, come on, it. Justin. He didn't just dream it up. I mean, he had to have a basis to believe that. Well, he doesn't. And I'm not slant drilling. Oh, you've seen him hurl threats at me before, Ashley. He is so... He is so hurt that I struck oil. He's, he's trying to get even me with me by slandering me. Are you going to sue him? No. <laughs> I just said that because I hoped it would scare him. Or strike her. It didn't seem to bother either one of them. Well, so much worse things are going to happen to me. I might as well get used to it. I just don't know where he came up with an idea like that. I don't know. I don't care. Justin, could Bubba be slant drilling without you knowing it? No. Justin, you know, a few minutes ago, you were talking to me and you told me that you'd use friends and, and enemies alike to get where you wanted. Mm hmm To the top. That bothered me. Why? I thought you liked my ambition. I admire your ambition, and I do want you to succeed. But it's not worth going to jail for. I'm not going to jail, Ashley. I run an honest operation. When Stryker starts the investigation, he'll find that out. You know, Stryker is an old oil man. I would never try to put anything over on him. I'd have better sense. I just had no idea things could get so ugly. Well, as soon as Stryker calms Max down, everything will be fine. I think it's going to take quite a bit to calm Max down. Ashley, the law's on my side. I'm not worried about Max Dicker or anybody else. <laughs> Are you sure that it's worth all this? Remember when I told you I was getting into this? I wanted to follow in my daddy's footsteps. You ask any Texan around to say one thing about Mike Marshall, and the first response will be Mike Marshall was an honest man. That is my daddy's legacy to me, and that is going to be my legacy to my sons. That's worth more than all the oil and power in this world. Where's Nita? Oh, she took Billy Joe Jr. up to his room. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he's the nicest customer I've had all night. Oh, honey, now don't worry. Listen, the first night here is always the roughest. Oh, I'm not complaining. I love working here. Well, that's good, because you look like a good, hard worker. And also, the customers like you a lot. That's real good. Yeah. <laughs> now, Angela's going to be just fine. Uh, it's Nita I'm worried about. Oh, Nita will be all right. Ricky, you know that girl is like a daughter to me, and you saw her a while ago now just crying and Gary and I. Well, now, Maggie, that's because you're gone. Well, I, much as I miss Dwayne, I just cannot leave Houston until I know that girl can manage by herself. 
Well, she won't be alone. Ricky, remember what I told you, don't push her. I'm not going to push her. I just, I'm going to let her know that I'm here if she needs me, that's all. Well, she may need you now if you can just be patient. Yeah, well, it's a little hard for me to be patient, Maggie. It tears me up every time I see that girl crying like that. Well, she's been crying a lot ever since her and Billy Joe got separated. And Billy Joe is not worth her being upset about. Now, I can see both sides of it. Well, then, would you mind telling me why you think Billy Joe hid that money in the house when he knew that Joe Foster was looking for it? Ricky, Billy Joe wanted that money for Nita and the baby. Now, he didn't spend a, a penny of it on himself. <sighs> so, uh... Is everything all right? Billy Joe Jr. sleeping like a log. <laughs> I swear that baby can sleep through anything. Just like his daddy. Uh, I think I'm gonna um, go to the kitchen and see how things are doing in there. I guess you think I'm silly, don't you? <laughs> Crying no. at the drop of a hat. Stop at myself every time I mention Billy Joe's name. I don't think you're silly. It's not easy for me to stop thinking about Billy Joe. Even though I know things will not work out between us, I still worry about him. Well, you can take my word for it. Billy Joe can take care of himself. I don't understand why I've, I haven't heard from him in the last two days. Well, it's like I told you in the hospital. He's left town. Why has he left town and not told anybody? Well, I don't know why, but don't worry about it. Bobby Sue said he'll be right back. It's him. It's Bill Rafferty, real people. Well, hello. Hi there, Mr. Rafferty. Uh, How are you? I'm Roy. Uh, this here is my girlfriend, Bobby Sue. Uh, I got to tell you, she's about the biggest fan you got. Is that right? Yes, sir. Is she all right? Oh, yeah, she's fine. She's like, I got to tell you, she, she must chain herself that TV every, every time you're on. I think she's been chained to the TV a little too long. You know? <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. I heard you guys got the only Chinese cook in Texas that makes real Texas-style barbecue. Is that right? Well, you heard right. That's, uh, that's old Wang, and he's back. At... I'll tell you what. I'll take you back there and introduce you to him, all right? Is yeah, your uh, girlfriend going to be all right? Oh, she'll be just fine. She'll always watch your program. It's nice to meet you. No. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Mr. Rafferty, right this way. So, see you. He shook my hand. I'll never wash it again. Now I have to give up the beauty parlor for sure. Billy Joe! You'll never guess what just happened. Probably not. No, Bill Rafferty, you real people? He's in there in the back. He's thinking of putting Wang on his show with Lynch is great. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. What's wrong, Billy Joe? Was it really bad in Nashville? Yep. That deal I had set up for Elena up there fell through. Just as well, Elaine will probably dump me as her manager anyway. Well, I don't think Elaine would do that. Why not? I lied to Elaine just like I lied to Nita. Well, maybe you did. But she wouldn't dump you. Not after all you'd done for Elena. That don't matter now. What I did was wrong. I shouldn't have took that money. I know that now for all the good it does me. Oh, come on. It's not as bad as all that. I lost my wife. I lost my client. I lost everything I have. Oh. Lena, honey, please sit down. They'll be along shortly. Maybe I shouldn't have left the dining room. What happens if Daddy can't handle Max? Oh, your father is handled... A lot of situations much more difficult than this. I followed Max into town. I, I had a feeling he was going to do something stupid. He got a head start on me. I couldn't stop him. It's over now. No, Mama. No, it's just the beginning. 
And everything was going so well for us. What am I supposed to say to Max? That he's wrong? I can't say that. I agree how he feels about Justin. If he were here... If he were here now, I'd kill him. I know, honey. I know. And I understand why both of you are so upset. But you mustn't encourage Max to take matters into his own hands. That is not the solution. It's up to you to convince Max to handle this calmly and reasonably. Otherwise, honey, someone's going to get hurt. Are you all right? Yes. So it's Justin for now. Justin is pumping oil out of our land as fast as possible. He's filling his pockets with our money, and in the process, he's destroying the land. Max, you can't be sure that Hello. Justin slant really. Striker, it all adds up. That high wire fence, the guard dogs, and that oil rigger who quit because he didn't want any part of Bubba's dirty business. You're going to need more evidence than that. Daddy? Daddy, is there any way to prove it? Yes, they can have a directional survey. Well, Justin would never approve that. <clears throat> well, World Oil owns the project. Duran can order a survey. Oh, he'd never do it. I think they will. Well, he never should have given Justin permission to drill out there in the first place. Alex is the one who approved this project, not Ryan. He's been opposed to it since the beginning. Max, why don't you call uh, Ryan in the morning and tell him your suspicions? I'll talk to him tonight. He's at the ranch with Ginny. You ready to go, honey? Yes. Good night, Vicky. Strike. Good night, Max. Honey, you'd better drive home. Well, okay. Night, night, honey. Well, what do you think about all this? I don't know. Max is so determined to stop that project. He may be right about that drilling. You know, I can't understand Justin being so stupid to get involved in something like this. Oh, if he thought he could get away with it. Oh, it doesn't surprise me one bit. He always did think the worst of him. He always proved me right. I hope you're uh, wrong this time. So do I. Do you think Max can keep a lid on his temper long enough to get to let Ryan get this settled? Rena will do her best to control him. I'll talk to Ryan first thing in the morning. Sweetheart, why don't you go on upstairs and get ready for bed? I'll lock up and turn out the lights. All right, I'll do that. <sighs> Honey, you really think that uh, Rena's going to be able to handle Max? Yes. She'll do just fine. You haven't lost everything, Billy Joe. We still got the coop here. I'll probably lose the coop too. It served me right. Well, I don't know. I, I think you've been doing just great here. What business has doubled since you took over from Chris Shaw? It had nothing to do with me. Elena's the one who's drawing the crowds. Billy Joe, oh, it's a new boss, Pete. Don't don't say anything about Roy being in the kitchen with Rafferty. He's real persnickety about how he runs this place. It's a little slow again tonight, Bobby Sue. Yeah, well, maybe it'll pick up, you know, later. Oh, Mr. Parnell, this here's Billy Joe Wright. Well, the famous Billy Joe Wright. I'm glad to meet you. Yeah, we, we talked over the phone, but it uh, seems we always miss getting together somehow. That's exactly what I've been wanting to do for some time now. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Oh, look, Mr. Parnell, you can save your spiel here if... Uh... I know you don't want me to handle Elena or the coop anymore, so I'll just bow out. No, crazy. no, no. On the contrary. I like what you've been doing here and with Elena. I'd like you to go right on doing both of them. Where's Roy? Uh, he's in the back uh, getting more beer. In that case, uh, would you mind getting us a couple of beers, Bobby Sue? Oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, you you got to be kidding me, Mr. Parnell. I mean, why would you want me around here when all I did was mess things up? 
Oh, you're referring to Elena's having been abducted by this Joe Foster guy? I don't hold you responsible for that. <laughs> well, you're the only one then. Oh, I'm not one to forget past good deeds, Billy Joe. You're the one who first brought Elena to the attention of my company. Now her records begin to bring in a nice piece of change for my associates and me. Oh, I know business has kind of fallen off around the coop temporarily, but I think things will change when Elena Decker comes back. Well, uh, I ain't so sure she's going to be coming back here. Why? She's still upset about this Joe Foster guy? I understand from the papers that he abducted her a second time. I guess so. I don't know. Does uh, she have any idea what happened to him? What do you mean, what happened to him? Well, according to the papers, uh, he dropped her off somewhere around the railroad yard, and police seem to think he may have hopped a freight out of town. Well, yeah, I read that too. Well, did uh, um, she ever mention where he might have been headed? <laughs> Not to me, she didn't. Well, wherever he is, he's a pretty wealthy man right now. He's probably snuggled down in some fancy hotel in Mexico or South America, leading the kind of life that you and I can only dream about. Yeah. According to the papers, uh, Lena told the police he must have gotten away with almost a million dollars. Oh, uh, look, Mr. Parnell, uh, if you don't mind, I just do not talk about that money any anymore. I'd rather not hear anything about it ever again. Yeah, oh, two beers. <laughs> Thank you. You know, sometimes I think this is all a dream and I'm going to wake up from it right where I started with nothing. That is not going to happen. Joe, so why'd you ever get yourself tattooed? It's ugly, isn't it? <laughs> why do you care about me? Because... I think that you've shown me a side of yourself that you've never shown to anybody else. What if you just imagine that? I'm not. <laughs> what if I'm not what you think I am? Why do you always put yourself down? I'm just waiting for you to see through me, that's all. Does it bother you so much to know that I like you? Not just a little. Why is that? Well, it's not a feeling I'm used to. Oh, come on. You must have been real close to someone at some time in your life. Listen, will you at least promise me that you won't leave until the morning? then I can have some time to think about what we should do. I promise. Things are going to be better for you from now on. Believe me. Yeah. You must be worn out. Mm, thank you. I guess I am. But I sure am happy to be home. <laughs> oh, it was lonely here without you. You know, I'm used to having Steve gone all day at school, Barrett at work. But this house is empty without you. When I was in Virginia, I, I thought about how empty my life would be without you, Kate. Things are going to be just fine now. Justin will not take this ranch away from you. I still have the spunk to fight him. Did Ryan go back to town? Yeah, he left about 20 minutes ago. Damn. Did you tell him about Justin? No, I thought that's something that you should do. What about Justin? Max thinks that he's slant drilling. That's drilling at an angle so they can get oil from our land and not the Harpers. Why would he think that? Well, we found an old letter at Mike's, and it seems that Bubba Wadsworth has been suspected of slant drilling since 1968. Max, this is Ryan's project. You've got to talk to him and show him that letter. Now, the only one I want to talk to is Bubba Wadsworth. Max, you know that's not going to do any good. Now, he's worse than Justin, and he'll deny any guilt. 
Ryan would never do illegal drilling here, Max. I'm sure of that. Well, all I'm sure of is that I'm going to get rid of that oil well. One way or the other. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. speaking you have those pills almost killed you you know coffee please so what's on your agenda for today oh not much business meeting later this morning long one no about a half an hour or so then i'll be back what's on your schedule I don't feel like doing much of anything, Peter. I'm not surprised. Even though I got you to throw up most of those pills, I'm sure you must have a lot still in your system. I suppose I should thank you. <laughs> I'm not asking for thanks, Paige. Sorry. I'm sure that sounded pretty ungrateful. You know, you may not think so. Not now. But I think there's a whole new life opening up for you. For both of us. Have you spoken to Stryker about the possibility of an appeal? We discussed it. What does he say? He said we can't make an appeal until further evidence turns up, Dad. And right now, there isn't any. Well, maybe some will turn up. You know, I'm glad you're thinking about going back to work at KVIK. As I've thought about it a lot. I think it'll do me good to get back there. I'm sure Vicky will like having you back. I hope so. Dennis, I spoke with Paige. Look, Dad, Paige and I are through now. I don't ever want to talk about Paige again. Oh! Well, guess what I brought you this time. Well, I don't have to guess. I can smell it. Bacon and eggs. Well, I hope they haven't gotten too cold. Oh, boy. Oh, and potatoes. Oh, it looks great. Well, I'm glad mm. I got a chance to cook you a hot meal for a change. Yeah, how'd you manage that? Well, Jeb had to go out and work on the south range this morning, so I had the kitchen all to myself. Mm. I, guess well, I didn't have to worry about him asking me all kinds of questions. What about Ricky? Ricky left for Houston before I even got up. Hmm. You know, you look different this morning. Well, I thought you'd never notice. You look nice. Well, I'd spruced up a little. I went downstairs, splashed a little water on my face. Got one of your brother's shirts that you gave me. Well, it looks good on you. Thanks. What's the occasion? You, for one. What's the other one? I gotta leave you today, Elena. Thank you for pulling me out of bed this morning. Well, it was my pleasure. I hope you didn't miss that 8.30 appointment. No. No, I, I got there on time. You saved me again. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful time last night. I did, too. For the most part. What, what part didn't you like? Well, I wasn't crazy about the part when Max Decker came storming into the dining room at the top of the World Club, accusing you of slant drilling on the Harper property. Oh, oh yes, yes, I, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, Justin. Now, I don't know how you can be so casual about it. Those were really terrible accusations, and they could ruin you in this town. My darling, none of Max's accusations are true. Stop worrying about it. Well, you can't just ignore it. I'm not. I'm going to take care of everything today. Why didn't you wake me up? 
Max, today's your day off, isn't it? He didn't get to bed until 4 a.m. He needed the rest. Well, it may be my day off, but I gotta do something about Justin and his oil well. I thought Daddy told you last night that he'd check on it. Rena, this is my problem, and I'm gonna deal with it. How, Max? Well, first of all, I'm gonna have a little talk with Bubba Wadsworth. Max, please! Please don't start anything with Bubba. He's the one who started it, and I'm going to be the one to finish it. You're not going out there, Max. They've got guard dogs all over the place. That's why the fence is up. I'm going to talk to Bubba. Max, they'll hurt you! Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie. Honey, calm down. I'm scared, Max. I don't want anything to happen to you. Listen, you know that, don't you? Nothing is going to happen to me. Honey, those guys are playing rough. They're playing for big stakes, and killing someone isn't going to make any difference to them. Rena. The oil they are taking is not coming from the Harper property. It's coming from our place. I know. You've said that to me before. They're stealing the oil. Now, I just can't stand around and do nothing just because a couple of Bubba's men happen to have shotguns. You know that Bubba isn't going to admit to you that he's slant drilling, so what's the point in talking to him? You're going to hear the same story that Justin told you last night. Bubba and Justin don't expect me to do anything. Max. You level with me. Just what do you expect to do? Are you going to storm out there and tell Bubba to stop drilling or you're going to kill him? Honey, please, please go into town. Talk to Ryan. He's the one who's, who's running World Oil now. It's their oil well. He's in a position to do something now, about Ryan it. Ryan was in a position to put a stop to it before that whole damn project got started and he wouldn't. Wait a minute, he couldn't stop it. No. No, because Alex is the one who made that decision. Ryan had no authority to reverse that decision. And what makes you think he will now? Because Ryan is in control now. And he talked to him. Please, talk to him. I know we can find a way to handle this without anyone getting hurt. Do you know where that survey Mike Marshall had made is? Yes. Why do you ask? Because I want to take it with me. Okay. Listen, you left Kate's car at your mama's last night, didn't you? Because you wanted to come back with me? Yes. Well, do you want to take a drive into town with me right now and pick it up? Max, remember that we promised we wouldn't let Justin ruin our lives. Don't worry, honey. That's one promise I'm going to keep. What are you planning today, Justin? I'm trying to straighten things out with Ryan Connor, if I can find him. Well, that's easy. He's downstairs in a meeting. What meeting? Well, as far as I know, it has something to do with, um, more tankers for world oil. <laughs> oh. Justin, I gotta see you. Good morning, Mr. Wadsworth. I'm afraid I didn't hear you knock on the door. Hello, Bubba. Uh, if you take off that hat, you can use this office. Be a little talk. You mean you're not gonna use this office right now? No. Uh, there's some filing I can do. Max Decker knows about the drilling. He paid me a little visit last night. Top of the world club. Dining room. About 50 people were present to witness his little tirade. Well, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you let me know? I tried to. Where the hell were you, Bubba? I was out looking for Sonny Morris. What happened to him? Ah, he walked off the job. 
He went to Max and told him what was going on. Hey, he's dumb, but he's not that stupid. Well, how else would Max find out? It's just not possible. There are only a few people who know the truth, Bubba. You and me and your personal crew. Right. And Max. Now Max knows. Yeah, well, let Max prove it. He's just bluffing. You better be damn sure he can't prove it. Now, you wait a minute, buddy. I never gave you any guarantees that there wouldn't be trouble. When you brought that survey around to me, I told you there was no way we were going to find any oil unless we hit that pool on the deck of land. I'm not talking about guarantees, Baba. I'm talking about covering our tracks. Okay. Okay, you took some risks hiring me. But think of the dividends you're realizing right now. Right. Okay, right. Now, you cool off. And you be Mr. Righteous. And you and I will do just fine. Where are you going? It's better that you don't know. Why? Well, in case the police start to question you, the less you gotta lie, the better. Elena, look. I'm no good. I keep telling you that, but you just can't get it into your head. I don't believe that. Look what I've done to you. Look how I've messed up your life. I like you, Joe. I like you too, Elena. That's the problem. If you like somebody, that shouldn't be a problem. You're, you're afraid to like me, aren't you? I'm not afraid. I think you are. I think that you're afraid to trust me. I don't trust anybody. Yeah, but you've got to trust somebody sooner or later, Joe. No, I don't. And you'll just end up alone. Is that what you want? You want to spend the rest of your life by yourself? Look, I don't want to talk about it anymore. My mind's made up. Oh, no, look. Don't start to cry. Look, I can't help. Look, I... I don't want to leave you, Elena. You gotta believe that. People don't do what they don't want to do, Joe. Why have you done this to me? Done what? You made me feel this way. I'm sorry. I gotta be alone. I gotta think. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go over to the Marshall Ranch and visit with Kate for a while. Then I'm gonna come back and bring you lunch, okay? Okay. Hey, look. Can you bring back a couple other things? What kind of things? I need salt and a brush. What kind of salt? Just regular salt, you know, table salt, a box. What, what for? I'll tell you when you get back. Okay. This is only a temporary arrangement, Peter. I didn't mean to imply that it wasn't. I just wanted to make sure that you understood, okay? Sorry you had to uh, sleep on the sofa last night. Oh, I didn't mind. Still, I feel a little funny about it. I mean, this is your suite. I'm the intruder. You're not an intruder. You're my guest, remember? I would still feel better if you took the bedroom. The sofa's fine for the time being. Thank you. Besides, you went to bed early last night. I didn't come in until late. If you'd been out here, I'm sure I would have waked you. I doubt that. I'm a very sound sleeper. I remember. So, uh, how were things at the coop last night, huh? Oh, fine. Well, business hasn't been very good since Elena Decker stopped singing there. Isn't Elena coming back? I don't know. Her manager, Billy Joe Wright, doesn't seem to know either. Billy Joe was there? Yes, he was. 
back from Nashville. Yes. I've decided to let Billy Joe go on managing the coop. Sounds like a good idea. You think so? Sure. He worked for me at the top of the World Club. You found him to be all right? Yeah. He's a good worker. I think that's important, don't you? Oh, I agree. <clears throat> I did have one alternate in mind, but um, I wasn't sure what you'd think about it. What's that? Well, since you're out of a job right now, I thought maybe you'd like to take over the coop yourself. Dennis, I think Paige is in a bad way. That's too bad. I saw her yesterday. And where is she staying now? With a friend, someone I don't think you know. Peter Parnell? How did you know that? He was at the suite when I went to see her. You want to know the truth, Dad? I think Paige has been seeing Parnell for some time now. I don't think that's true. Well, why else would she move in with a guy? I don't think she had anywhere else to go. Well, she could have gone to a hotel, Dad. I mean, it's obvious she made her own free will choice. Dennis, I think the truth is that Paige is hard up for money. No, that's just an excuse, Dad. Have you thought about a settlement for her yet? Maybe this isn't a good time to talk about it with you staring a prison sentence. Look, Dad, I made an offer she refused. Paige and I are through as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to know, Bubba, how many people in Texas know that you're an expert at slant drilling. Well, whoever they are, they're all millionaires because of me, so don't worry. And you don't think there's any chance that these people are going to talk? No. Then they'd be in the same boat as I am. I don't think Max Decker's going to give up easily on this. He's going to try every angle he can think of, Bubba. Look, I want you to concentrate on all that money you're making and leave the oil to me. You be careful. I always am. Justin, you're going to have to go back to your own office now. Mr. Connor's coming up. Oh, I was just leaving anyway. Buddy. Bubba? Miz. Well, how about taking a little drive with me? When? Right now. Oh. Actually, I was going to go home and go to sleep. Mr. Connor gave me the afternoon off because I worked all day on Saturday. So you can go out to the ranch with me. Let's have another little talk with Grandma. Good morning. Morning. Where is everybody? Well, Steve's over at Buddy's. Jenny took Songbird out for a workout, and I'm right here. What's it out? I haven't seen much of you lately. How are you feeling? I'm feeling, I'm feeling fine. I, I've been spending a lot of time down at my own house lately. Well, doesn't that get lonely for you sometimes? A little. I've had a lot of thinking to do, and I can't really think when there's a lot of people around. Well, sometimes you have too much time to think when there's nobody around. You really missed Jenny and Steve, didn't you? More than I realized. Now, Elaine, if you do get lonely, why don't you move into one of the big bedrooms upstairs? There's plenty of room. Well, thank you, but I, I really do like being down at my own house. If you feel like talking... No. Okay, thank you. No, um, not right now. When you do feel like it, let me know. Thanks. Is there anything you need down at your place? Yeah, I'd like to borrow a couple of things from my house, if I can. Help yourself. I think that I'm going to go get something to eat, if I may. Of course. Come on, Peter. you got to be joking. Why? Why would I be joking about a thing like that? You did a wonderful job running in the top of the world club. I'm sure you do well with the coop. I'm not interested. Well, you've got to do something. 
I know you, Paige. You're not going to be happy being out of work. I'll find a job. Yeah, but I want the help. No, thank you. I'd rather find something on my own, if you don't mind. Oh, Peter. Please. Why? Because I don't want it. You used to want it. Don't. You used to want it very much. I think I made a mistake in coming here to stay with you. Paige, why can't it be like it was before? You know why it can't. You used to have good times in the old days. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe you've forgotten. I haven't. The good old days were not that good, not from where I stand, Peter. I've changed, Paige, and so have you. No. It's Dennis, isn't it? He is still my husband. Come on, you're being a fool, Paige. Look what he did to you. He didn't do anything to me. I did it all to myself. You're wrong. No, I'm you're not. You're wrong. The minute your sweet Dennis discovered that you might be something more than the lily-white angel of his fantasy, he discarded you. Threw you out like a piece oh, of yeah. trash. Well, as I recall, you were pretty good at that yourself. Oh, come on, those days are over, Paige. Like your marriage. Now, look, you've got to forget this Dennis of yours or this whole thing is just going to happen all over again. Only next time, I might not be there to save you. Why are you doing this? Because you're too good to let this happen to you. I wish that were true. Look at yourself. When we were living together, you wouldn't step foot outside the bedroom until you were dressed to the teeth and your makeup perfect. Now look at yourself. You're a mess. I mean, you don't even care about yourself anymore. That's true. Well, you're too good for that, Paige. No. No, I'm not. Here's a large pool of oil right here. And I believe this is the pool that they're tapping. What makes you think that? Well, the rig's right here. Now, instead of drilling straight down, I believe that they've drilled at an angle, you know, like this, mm -hmm. which makes it a whole lot easier for them to tap that pool of oil. Our oil. Well, that's assuming the survey's correct, that there's no oil in the Harper place, but you've got a pool right here on your place, right? You see, in the beginning, we thought that the reason they were drilling so close to our property line was to make us angry by forcing us to look at those rigs all the time. But that's not the real reason. The real reason was they wanted to steal our oil. You know, I did talk with Stryker about this. What did Daddy have to say? He said that unless you get the cooperation of the engineer at the rig, it's almost impossible to prove anything. Yeah, well, even so, are you willing to try? Yes, I am, but on one condition. What's that? Do you stay away from Justin and Bubba while I check into this? Okay, you got a deal. Oh, there she is. Hello, Grandma. Justin, what are you doing out here? Oh, we thought we'd pay you a little visit. Maybe uh, have lunch with you. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Marshall. Ashley, I'm surprised you'd show your face out here. Why, Grandma? Because of your slant drilling. Well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to come out and see you, Grandma. You see, those, those wild accusations that Max has been making against me, they simply aren't true. Aren't they? No, they're not, Grandma. I know we've had our differences, but you ought to know I'm no thief. Right now, you're trying to steal the ranch from me so you can put up more oil rigs. You took advantage of your own sister. Dawn, Dawn needed money, Grandma. She wouldn't accept a loan from me, but I tried. Mm -hmm. You tricked her into selling her shares of the ranch to you. Grandma. I bet you never said one word about drilling for oil. Mrs. Marshall. Ashley. I'd appreciate it if you would stay out of this. This is a family martial affair. And I'm just in no mood for any of your Bible quotations today. Grandma, if we can just talk, talk about the slant drilling. I don't want to hear about it. You mean you're not even interested in hearing my side of it? All right, Justin. What is your side? You know how angry Max was, Grandma, having to see that 
that rig over on the Hopper property. He just couldn't stand it any longer, Grandma. So he decided to slander me so they'd take the rig off the land. Max would never do a thing like that. I know for a fact where he got his idea. You do? Yes. From your father. What? Max read some of Mike's communications. He found a letter stating that he suspected Bubba Wadsworth of slant drilling in 1968. Was Bubba prosecuted, Grandma? No, it was just a suspicion on Mike's part. So he pulled out of the project. His instincts were always good, just like Max's. If I were you, Justin, I'd have a talk with Bubba as quickly as you can. Grandma, I have overseen everything about this project. There is no way that he could be slant drilling out there without my knowing it. You are judged by the company you keep. Break away from this man as quickly as you can. Bubba's not a crook, Grandma, neither am I. You'll have to accept that. When Max can't prove his accusations, I'll be happy to accept your apology. Until then, I'd just as soon you didn't come back out on the ranch. Now, Mrs. Marshall, that doesn't seem quite fair since Justin already owns 40% of the ranch. Paige sold her shares to me, Grandma. That still doesn't give you the right to do as you please out here. I don't want to argue with you, Grandma. I love you. I just want us to be a family. I want to share things. Hello, Elliot. Come on in. Hello, Vicky. Please sit down. Thank you. How's Dennis doing? Well, he's not in very good shape. That's not surprising. Facing a prison sentence. Well, I don't think it's prison. It's the problem right now. Oh? I think Paige is the real source of the problem. I thought you told me they were getting a divorce. They are, but I've never known Dennis to be so bitter, so unrelenting, so unforgiving. I can't reach beyond that barrier to help him. But you won't stop trying, will you? Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> Excuse me. Sure. Yes. Oh. Well, <clears throat> well, why don't you have Jim Long take care of that? Right. <laughs> what would you ever do without Jim Long? <laughs> I don't want to think about it. You know, he'd be an excellent news director. Yes, he would be. But you'd be a better one. All right, maybe I'll give it a try. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Well, what about your book? Well, I've returned the advance to the publishers. I'm not going to write it, at least not now. Oh. Oh, Elliot, that's wonderful. <laughs> when can you start? Well, whenever you need me. How about the first of the week? Fine. All right. Good. Oh, Elliot, thank you. I'm really looking forward to working with you again. Thank you. Is that the kind of salt that you wanted? Yeah, this is fine. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to use it to take off the tattoo. How? Well, just take the salt, put it on a tattoo, and use the brush to scrape it off. Isn't that dangerous? No. Nah, you just take off a little skin. But what if it gets infected or something? It won't. It'll, um... Leave a little scar for a while, I guess. Have you ever known anyone else that's done that? No, but a couple of guys that I shipped out with once talked about it. They said it worked. Why do you want to get rid of this tattoo? Because it's going to be the first thing people use to identify me. Now, if I don't have it, then I got a better chance of getting away. You really are going, aren't you? 
I got no choice, Elena. I guess I won't be seeing you anymore. You know, there's an old saying, Elena. A bird can love a fish, but where are they going to build a nest? We got no future together. Where are we going to go? We would find a way, Joe. The only way we're going to find a way if we, is we spend the rest of our lives together on the run. I like you too much to do that to you. Now, wait. There is another way, you know. We, we wouldn't have to spend our lives on the run if you would turn yourself into the police. <laughs> Oh, please, send them right in. Hi, Mom. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Vicki, I want to apologize for my behavior last night at the top of the world. Point. No, it's all right, Max. Well, thank you, but I know how much I must have embarrassed you. Now, I know now why you were so angry. Well, I'm controlling my anger now to allow Ryan Connor time to conduct his own investigation of Justin's operation. When did you talk with Ryan? We just came from his office. Listen, Vicki, uh, has the station ever done a story on slant drilling? Yes, uh, I think Jim Long worked on it about two years ago, but we never aired it. Yeah, is Jim around? I'd like to talk to him. Well, I think he's down in the editing room. Would you like me to give no, him No, that's a... all right. I'll find him. We'll see you later. Honey. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen Max so calm, so reasonable. Honey, how did you do it? Mama, I think he's just worn out. He spent most of the night last night on the front porch just pacing up and down. I think you're pretty worn out, too. I feel better now that we've talked to Ryan. Ryan has a good head on his shoulders. I honestly believe that he's the only person that can deal with Justin. Mama, I hope that Kate can deal with him. Now, honey, that is one battle that you must stay out of. That's strictly for the marshals to straighten out among themselves. Mama, I assure you, I am staying out of it. All right. Ginny came back home and I told her all about it. I know that she'll look after Kate. Honey, Kate's been looking after herself for years. But she's scared now, Mama. She spent half of her life raising her family and running that ranch. Now Justin is trying to take away the only life she ever knew. <sighs> don't worry, dear. I don't think Justin will ever succeed in taking that ranch away from her. Hello, Paige. May I come in? Grandma? I had a talk with Justin. He told me you sold your share of the ranch to him. That's right. Paige, I ask you not to. I know. You said you had no reason to sell. When we talked, that was the truth, Grandma. Now things have changed. Certainly not for the better. And what's that supposed to mean? The man at the desk told me that this was Mr. Parnell's suite. Yes, that's right. He's an old friend of mine. How could you? You're a married woman. Dennis and I are getting a divorce, Grandma. Besides, it just, it just doesn't matter anymore. Paige, you're a marshal. You were raised as a marshal. You were taught the difference between good and evil. Look, Grandma, I needed a place to stay. And this was the only place I was welcome. You wouldn't have taken me in. You don't know. Oh, that. yes, I do. I know that the only thing you care about is that damn land of yours. And the family. And the Marshal name, which you and Justin seem determined to ruin. 
It looks as if the only thing you give a damn about is yourself. That's not true. Paige, you didn't even have the decency to come home to your father's funeral. Oh, Grandma. Why are you bringing that up all over again? Because I want you to face the fact that the only reason you came home was because you failed as a movie star. Please, don't do this. And now look what's gotten to you. Here you are, living openly in sin. You're worse than Justin. That's right, Paige, cry. Cry for yourself. Because nobody else will cry for you now. this? Oh, uh, my grandmother Kate paid me an impromptu visit this morning. Unpleasant? Oh, visits from your grandmother are always unpleasant, Peter. She did set me straight on a few things. <clears throat> well, from the looks of you, they were all the right things. Oh, yeah, they were all right, all right. Like this. Don't think I've ever seen it before. Oh, I, I I guess I haven't worn it for a while. I think we should celebrate. Yeah, well, how was your business meeting this morning? It's all right. Just all right? Well, you know, that isn't important. What is important is this. <laughs> Jill, I didn't know what your grandmother said to you to bring this about. She made me see what I am. Max, was Jim able to help you at all? Yes, thanks. You know, he's the fellow that uh, showed me the news film about Bubba Wadsworth coming out of the court building with the jacket over his head. Uh huh. Jim never forgets a story he reports. <laughs> That's a good man, Mama. You better hold on to him. I intend to do just that. Well, listen, we better get going and let your mama finish her work. Uh, no, uh, I have to go down to the newsroom for a couple of minutes, but if you two have time to wait for me, I'll buy you lunch. You sure you don't want to go back to the ranch? Yeah, I'm sure. I could do without the sound of that oil rig for an hour or two. Good, I'll be right back. Darling, if you're too tired, I'll drive back to the ranch. I'm sure it'll be all right to leave Kate's car in town for one more day. What about Kate? She could use Ginny's car. Well, we'll see. You know, I feel a lot better since I talked to Ryan. That's what I told Mama. I just hope he's able to clear this whole mess up. He'll do his best, darling. Do you realize how badly this will reflect on world oil if it's true? Well, it's not Ryan's fault. I'm not saying that it's Ryan's fault, but he's the one who'll be blamed if word gets around. Well, he plans on keeping the investigation as quiet as possible. Honey, if Justin is slant drilling, that means that there's no oil out in the harbor place. When those wells are closed, we won't ever have to worry again about anybody drilling out our way. And our kids will be able to stand on the front porch and see nothing but grazing land for miles around. That's right. We will decide how we want our land to be. Speaking of children. Not yet, darling. <laughs> I know. I promised you uh, an Easter baby, or mm -hmm. at least a mother's baby. Mm -hmm. And you always keep 
your promises. I think you're going to have to help me out on this one, Max. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Connor. Hello, Ashley. Hello, Ryan. I was over at the Harper place and Bubba told me that he thought you might be here. Well, I assume you've heard of those rumors that Max has been spreading about... No, no, Max Kelly. isn't uh, spreading any rumors. Well, I don't know what else you'd call it. He came to see me this morning and asked me to look into the situation. He's not interested in smearing your name. Oh, he, he seemed very interested last night, Ryan. Well, he isn't. He cares too much about the Marshall family to have something like this gossiped about. It's not true, Ryan. About the slant drilling. Well, I hope not, Justin, but uh, I'm going to investigate. Oh, well, well, Bob and I will be happy to supply you with all the information. That no, you're no, no, I'll get my own information. Bob, I'm just trying to help. Now, until the situation's clarified, I'm ordering the well to be shut down. You can't do that. Well, you see now, Justin, I'm running World Oil now, and this is a World Oil project, so I'm calling the shots. Do you realize how much this macho stand of yours is going to cost World Oil if production is stopped? I don't care. I've made my decision. Now, if you want to give Bubba the word, fine, or I'll go over and do it myself. It's up to you. I'll talk to Bubba. Good. Do it now. I want production stopped immediately. I think Iris Wheeler will have something to say about this. Are you crazy? Joe, would it be so terrible if you gave yourself up? Hey, toss me in prison and throw away the key. Maybe not. Joe, I know this fantastic lawyer, Stryker Bellman. He was Dennis Carrington's lawyer. Dennis Carrington? Yeah, that's right. He's, he's the one that was arrested. Wait, is he the guy that they convicted for the murder of Chris Shaw? Well, he confessed, but Stryker Bellman got his sentence reduced from first-degree murder to manslaughter. And I'm sure that he could lighten your sentence, too, if you would just give yourself up. Joe, I, I could come and visit you while you were in prison, and then when you get Hey, look, did you notice Dennis Carrington? Not very well. Why? Well, Anna, there's something I got to tell you. What? I wanted to do it for a couple of weeks now, but I just couldn't. Tell me what? I killed Chris Shaw. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. <laughs>